what's up guys resurrect here bringing you another video in this video I'll be showing you how to overclock your Haswell 4670k to 4.3 gigahertz um, I assumed that this would work on the i5 as well or excuse me the i7 the 4770k if you want to get to 4.3 gigahertz uh, I cannot record my bios uh, due to not having an external uh, video camera but I do have in BIOS pictures. They're not uh, literally in BIOS. My in BIOS uh, screen capture was um, uh, not not saving to my USB stick. So the first picture I'm going to show you. Uh, these are the settings that you want to use for your 4.3 uh, overclock. Uh, this is going to be my MSI BIOS. Uh, whatever BIOS you use. Um, I'm going to hope that you're going to be using an MSI, so it would be much easier. If you're not, you may want to follow my settings. Uh, you might have to tweak a little bit too. And that goes for everybody. Uh, not every system and every CPU is the exact same. So what I want you to keep in mind is that every setting may not uh, be the best for you. Just play around with it, run some benchmarks, and I'll show you those in a second. Now this is the uh, main menu in my BIOS and uh, as you can see I, can, I have settings on the left overclock uh, flash overclock profile hardware and then board explorer <clears throat> and as you can see uh, at the time that the picture was captured uh, the CPU was at 40 degrees Celsius and the motherboard which is uh, not the motherboard itself or the inside of the computer is 32 degrees Celsius as I was saying uh, it shows you that my 4670k is stock at 3.4 gigahertz and my current uh, CPU overclock is at 4.3 gigahertz at 43 and then a, a multiplier of 43 and at uh, 100 megahertz and it shows you what RAM I'm running, I'm running a 1066 not the best RAM um, I will lean more towards 1600 uh, but uh, this is a budget build so I kind of uh, went with what I could and then it shows you that I'm running at 8 gigs of RAM now in the next picture I'm going to show you is the actual settings uh, in this picture you can see that the uh, CPU frequency and the uh, base clock. Now, what I want you to, uh, you guys to do, if you uh, do have an MSI by the, um, BIOS, and or if your BIOS has this uh, functionality, I need you to change your base clock apply mode to next boot, uh, then change your CPU uh, ratio to 43, which is, is equivalent to 4.3 gigahertz, or if you're shooting for 4.2, it'd be 42, 4.0 uh, would be 40, and so on and so forth. Um, CPU ratio mode, uh, that's really up to you. Uh, they have dynamic, and then they have, um, there's two different modes, there's dynamic and uh, another mode. Dynamic means uh, that the, the CPU clock will adjust itself uh, depending on what it's using. Uh, saying that if it's at 100% load, it will be at 4.3 at all times, and then it will uh, underclock itself when it's not doing anything. It helps save on your uh, electric bill, so and it, it's really no point of running your CPU at 4.3 all the time. Uh, I don't see any reason you would do that unless you're gaming or editing, and w even in doing that, you're in dynamic mode when your CPU is needed it will overclock itself back to fully 4.3 gigahertz so it's really up to you but I leave it a dynamic uh, just to save on the CPU life and um, save on the power bill a little bit uh, leave all these to default if your turbo's on turn it off uh, so it doesn't overclock anymore or mess the, the overclock up any I just turn it off um, set your RAM I have 16 uh, 1066 and then the reference clock I leave it auto, the link I leave it auto, and then the fast memory at auto. Now I'm going to show you the next picture, but it's more or less what I just said. Everything else I leave it auto except for the, um, sorry, the uh, CPU voltage where I can find this right here. I have mine at uh, 1.2. Um, like I said earlier, it's going to depend on your system and your CPU and uh, your power supply. But uh, I have mine in a safe uh, 1.2. I didn't really want to um, get close to the the borderline. Uh, some you may be able to go to like, uh, let's say, 1.19 and or 1.18. It's really up to you. Uh, but I don't really want to get really, really. I don't want to have to get that borderline of uh, crashing or not. I want to be at a safe, stable 1.2. I don't want to 
under voltage just a tad bit just to get a little bit more power saving out I'd rather just keep it a, a solid 1.2 and I don't want to over volt it too much to like 1.25 which would be 1.25 uh, I, I wouldn't want to do that either now if you have an o older BIOS uh, or an older board for some reason um, uh, I assume you wouldn't because this is Z87 but uh, you want to stay away from 1.3 my BIOS if I put it 1.3 it turns red to show me that's really bad and you don't want to do that um, if you're having to go above I would say about 1.26 you or 1.27 you might just not want to consider overclocking um, it's it's like I said it's really bad I, I tried to overclock to 1. Point or 4.5 gigahertz and I was I was at 1.25 um, and that's just really borderline in it and it, it I couldn't get a stable overclock. I don't know if it's actual voltage or something else in my settings, but I could not get a stable overclock. I could get it to boot, but running uh, Prime 95 would crash it after about 15 minutes. So I just totally uh, said no, and I'm like I said, I'm stable with a uh, 4.3. So uh, 0.2 gigahertz is really not a big deal to me. Um, I it might be for some tweakers and uh, enthusiasts, but for me, it's not. So it's not worth it. Now, what I want to go into now is the just an example or a demo of the Prime 95 and the uh, Prime 90, uh, the temps that I'm getting. Now I'm going to put this right here and put the task manager on the side for you guys so you can see the performance. Now I'm going to do two quick tests to show you the two differences. Um, let's get the temperature gauge up too. That's GPU. Here we go and then these are the temps so let's put this right here this right here and this right here okay and now you can see the temperatures that I'm currently running um, it's not far off uh, it, it is on some course it is on uh, some if you have a really good um, over like maybe three degrees four degrees over the entire four cores you're doing really good as far as uh, thermal paste and your your heat dissipation usually mine's about three four but uh and this overclock it's running just a tad bit hot on my uh first core i guess you would call this one um and like i said in cpu z you can see that uh i'm at 4.3 right now um i don't know what in the world is uh actually making it s stay at 4.3 maybe the task manager probably i don't know but it's it's usually in dynamic at underclock stuff but right now right now it's not now let's go ahead and start a blend test and we'll let this run for about a minute or two just to show you my temperatures and what they're looking like. Uh, usually you usually want to stay ab under about 60 degrees Celsius. Um, that's my safe zone. Uh, I know these uh, processes are allowed to go up to I think it's about 70 but in all my experiences with uh, CPUs I really tend to stay ab below 60. Um, I'm like 60 or 61. I I'm that's usually fine for me. But if you're like at 65, pushing 70, uh, you would probably want to uh, probably think of another overclock or try to maybe undervolt your your voltage a little bit more. Or you're running your voltage too high, and if you're still getting really high temps and you're not getting a stable overclock, then you probably just want to buy a new cooler. I'm using a liquid closed loop cooler right now, a cooler master, um, and my my temperatures aren't really that bad for Haswell. Uh, I don't know if you guys have read reviews online, but I know I've done my research, and the Haswell CPUs do tend to run very hot, and uh, for overclocking, that's especially uh, a problem. So as you can see in my case, I'm not really going that hot in a blend. Uh, like I said, it is a blend, so it's going to start off slow, then throw some other things at it. So I'm going to stop this overclock or this blend test real quick and then show you guys a quick maximum power and heat so you can see what the temps are looking like at full load. <coughs> now with this set, you should see my temperatures spike just a bit. They may push 60 and li like we said earlier, 60 is 61 is a, a good um, it's not excellent, but it's fairly good for uh, Haswell. So, like I said, you want to stay under about 60, 61. And if you're going over that, like I said, it depends on your cooler and the thermal taste you used. Uh, it may be acceptable 
I personally just tend not to do that. And as you can see, even with the the maximum power and this debate, the uh, first minute or two of this uh, blend test or this power test, it's not really uh, going over 60. It doesn't look like. I mean, we're really close to it, but we're not really going over 60. And then CPU is at full load and it's running at 4.3. And far as I'm concerned, that's really good for 4670K temp, uh, temp wise. So I just want to show you just a little overclocking guide, just a little uh, helpful tips or anything that you may need when overclocking your own but bear in mind like I said earlier your computer may be different just try to run some benchmarks try to run some prime 95 prime 95 is really good it uh, and if you're worried about your temperatures maybe your room is hot or wherever your desk or desktop may be maybe hot or you don't know if your heat sink and cooler can uh, handle it use the the maximum power and the uh, heat uh, one first and if it's like I said if it's going over whatever your um, your preference is for heat you may not want to be able to do that much of an overclock like I said for me it's 60 so uh, as long as I stay under 60 I'm happy I used a bunch of older CPU so 60 was kind of the max and 60 now for me is just a baseline but like I said these Haswells are uh, you can go over 60 I think uh, like I said 70 is the border of uh, like the line you don't want to surpass so I hope this guys uh hope this helped you out a little bit. I'll see you guys in the next video.